I just got out of the car at a West Virginia rest stop. Uh, as I look at my GPS, it tells me that I'm about 100 feet away. This is one of my geocaches. It's a West Virginia Tim geocache. It's a gadget cache. So it tells me it's going to be easy to find and hard to get into. As I arrive, I can clearly tell this is a geocache. Cache page tells me it's locked. So here is a, another birdhouse um, chained to the tree. It's got a four-digit lock on it. So now as I look at it, all I've got to do is figure out what do I have to do to get the combination to that, to that lock, that four-digit lock. So as I look at this, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but there are numbers all over this geocache. For example, right here is an eight. Up here a little higher is a four. Here's a five. There are also places that take a key. And the name of this cache is the key is a key. And uh, so let's look and see if we can find a key. Yeah, I found the key, this is gonna be hard for you to see, but if I reach up under the cache and I pull, here is a skeleton key that looks like it's on a retractable clothesline. If I let the key go, it goes actually up in the cache. So the name of this cache is the key is a key, and it tells me that I'm going to need this key to open the cache. First thing that cachers most likely will do is to try this key in these different discussions. Each excursion has a number. Here's one that's an eight. This one says four. This, this one up here has a five. So I won't bore you, but I've already tried that like most cashers do and it don't work. Some of the numbers are circled. They have a circles around them. Some of the numbers like this seven has a line under it. So sometimes cashers will take all the numbers with the underlines or the numbers with the circles. Uh, and they'll try those and they'll try to put it on this combination lock and of course that's not going to work. So how do I get in this thing? If I read the cache page very carefully it gives me some hints. It keeps telling me that this key is the key to the cache. It says think about the properties of the key. Okay so since this is my cache I'm going to give you the secret. The hint says the key is the key. That's the name of the cache. It says, but think of the properties of the key. So this is a skeleton key. So what do we know about skeleton keys? They're hundreds of years old, some of them are, and they're made of iron. The hint says, what's a property of the key? Iron keys are magnetic. So let's just take the key and just wave it in front of the cache. When I do that, bang, right there you'll notice that that magnet is so strong that it's actually stuck to the number five. So by just waving the key in front of the cache, it sticks right there to a number. There's a couple hints. If you look up here at the top beside of the lock, I don't know if you can read it, but it has the word first. If I look down here at the bottom, there's a word down here that says last. So I can assume that up here at the top, the first number is going to be up here. The last number will be down here somewhere. So it will go first to last. And all you have to do is wave this key in front of all these different numbers all over the cache until you can come up with the four numbers in sequence from highest to lowest that will open, open that lock. I place the numbers in the lock. The lock then opens, of course, then as you lift up the door, it exposes the geocache. So, welcome to The Key is the Key. Uh, this is a uh, very difficult cache. It's about a three and a half. I'd say the log suggests that people normally take anywhere from a half hour to an hour to figure it out. I actually have my telephone number down here on the bottom and uh, I get a call almost every day. So this has been West Virginia Tim's Key is the Key. Uh, and in all my caches, I love to show you how I build them. So I hope you stick around, watch the rest of this video. I'm gonna take you back to my cache shop 
Uh, it was filmed several months ago before I had a coat of paint on it or even had any idea of what I was going to call this thing. I'm going to show you how to build this cache very simply. So uh, thanks for visiting uh, my uh, uh, gadget caches and there'll be more gadget caches posted soon. We're in my shop. I wanted to show you a couple of these pieces before I actually put it together. Um, inside this cache is a um, retractable uh, clothesline. I just bought this at a hardware store. It's eight feet long. The skeleton key I bought online. But is if I pull this out, and I'll be able to show you better when I have two hands. When you pull this out, uh, the retractable clothesline keeps it in here. I made all this out of, um, the whole birdhouse is made out of uh, treated plywood. This is three quarter inch, a two by two piece is big enough. And um, here you can tell I put my primer on here and my cat's wanting to get in here and enjoy this. The geocache is now drying. It has to, uh, this is the second coat of primer. What I really wanted to show you though, was uh, there are four holes on the inside of that geocache with four different numbers that give you the numbers to the combination. Um, I wanted to show you how I did those holes. I used a half inch bit. Uh, I used brad bits. Uh, now of course I use a drill press but you can just use a hand drill. What's real important is that the magnets that you choose be very very strong. And so there's a company that I bought the magnets from there's the size of magnets uh, that I bought. They're very, it's a very strong magnet. This magnet works really well with a half inch hole. So I drilled a half inch hole. Uh, my drill bit, if you move the magnet over and then it fits perfectly inside half inch hole. And so it's about halfway through the wood. So if you're watching this Only one more thing to do before you put this cash out. You want to give it a good clear coat of something to keep the numbers from fading. Hey, thanks for visiting Gadget Caches.